Hello, how actors can improve the look of their resumes. Now, whether you've got lots to put on a resume or you're a beginner and you've got almost nothing to put on it, I'm sure you know that the resume decides whether a casting director will give you an audition more than your letter or a photo will. A letter may interest them if you've anything relevant in it, and the photo may encourage them to look at your resume, but it's the resume that decides. They won't give you an audition because your photo looks nice. A good photographer can make most of us look nice, but all it does is makes them look at your resume, and there are two things which make a good resume. One is the information on it, and the other is something else. That something else includes dozens of things which may not seem very important on their own, but if each one makes the resume 2% better, then 50 of these things make it 100% better. The information needed on it is fairly obvious, but only fairly obvious. And let's first imagine, please, a casting director opening the mail from actors on the days when they're setting up some auditions. Obviously, the casting director already knows lots of actors from the past whom they want to audition, and they'll have told agents the types they're looking for, and the casting director will have looked through the actors the agents have suggested, so they've been looking at resumes non-stop for hours or days. And let's imagine, though, that they've got two hours left at the end of one day to look through the resumes sent by actors themselves. And let's imagine that they've got spaces left in their audition schedule to see 10 more actors. They want to find someone new and they've received 100 resumes from actors. So looking at 100 applications in those two hours gives them an average of one minute and 12 seconds for each one without a second's break, including opening the envelope and possibly scribbling a note on the resume or throwing it in the trash. Less than an actual minute looking at the resume itself to decide if they want to include you in the auditions. Uh, on the other hand, if they receive 200 letters, that's 36 seconds for each one. But let's say they've got 100 and space in the auditions to meet 10 of them well, it'll help the casting assistants if they can throw some of the hundred in the trash straight away. Well, let's not say in the trash, if they can put them aside straight away and not look at them for more than a second. Then they've more time than a minute to look at what seem to be the better ones. If they can decide against the resume in a few seconds for any reason, that helps them. So the impression they get of your resume in those first two or three seconds matters. They glance at your name on it to see if they already know you, perhaps, and glance at your photo to check that you're possibly the type that they want. But then when they look at your resume, there's one thing they always, always see first, and it's not the information. But let's deal with the information first. I'm going to show you two resumes, one uh, an old draft of one of mine that needed a lot of improving, and one I've made up. A kind of thing a newcomer to the business might have with almost nothing to include on it. And I'll try to improve them both. And I'm not sh using my resume to show off, I'm using it to show some mistakes I've made. I should be a star by now, so don't be over-impressed. Uh, and I do have a lot to put on a resume, but if you don't have, the idea of this is to show you how to decide what to include of your own. This is an old draft of one of mine. Dozens of things wrong with it, which I'll come to in a minute, and I'll blow it up so it is easier for you to see. And this one is a combination of several that I've been sent which looks as if it's been written by somebody's mother or father. It's got almost as many mistakes on it as my one has, making the fact that there's hardly anything on it into a bigger problem. Uh, the mistakes, well, the, the font changes size from 14 to 12 here for no reason. Uh, she's got a manager, and that fact alone should make it in the same size print as her name, and her name should be slightly bigger. The name of the union is not Sag, it's sag after her. There are no personal details here which could be like her hair colour and her height to distinguish her from others. She might include her weight and her email address. It's for a casting director, not a dating agency. And as it's so short, the caster might have time to look at those details if any of them are interesting. And these two jobs are actually major films, but it just looks rather amateur. Films often get some kind of an award, and this one was actually nominated for Best Cast Award at the Ohio Film Festival, so she could put Best Cast Award Ohio Film Festival. And the So Little maybe include a student film or two here, especially if she's played a role on it that's relevant. Uh, this role 
was a nurse, in fact, so she could have put Nurse Brown instead of Joan, or name it gym instructor or, or drug addict if it's relevant to the role you're playing. The list of training takes up as much space as the actor's work, and that'd be fine if she expressed it more professionally. So, if it was laid out like this, at the moment these training reads Meisner with John Windsor Cunningham, Scene Study with Summer Chekhov Institute, Dialect Study, Juilliard, Period Dancing with Gemma Marcolis, Shakespeare Study with Shakespeare and Company, Improv with Carl Sawyer. And it could read Juilliard 2011, Shakespeare and Company, Summer Chekhov Institute, and, if she wants to put it, Meisner with John Windsor Cunningham. And then in skills, she could put British dialects, standard and modern estuary, as that's quite useful and quite unusual. And if it's relevant to the role she's applying for, period dancing with Jim and Marcola's diploma. But before I come to the other thing I mentioned, which matters so much about resumes, let's look at the information on this old draft of mine. And, and if you've not got as much to quote as I have, the point of this video is to show you how to improve whatever you do have. Uh, list your agent at the top, of course, if you have one, and try to use a similar font in style for the agent's name and address as they use on their own headed paper. And the agent's number, of course, personal details, I list my unions and training, and here height, hair, eye colour, though I may cut the eye colour as I don't see the point of it. And I've chosen four columns here the productions, what I played in them, the companies, and the directors. But if I cut out the column of directors' names, it just looks less crowded. And I don't think a list of directors' names is worth having if it makes it look crowded. Just look at them side by side. I just think this one's more attractive. And of course I've listed, getting rid of this for the moment, I've listed theatre jobs first, because this was to be sent for a theatre role. But if your list is for TV or film jobs, then you put them first. And if you've got enough theatre or on-camera jobs, you just list one of the others, choosing one job to quote by as being the most relevant or the most impressive. But the main problem here is the information is so mixed. You must change the order of the jobs each time you print it out to suit whatever you're applying for. And the first job you list here must be the most relevant one. It's the first thing they'll see, and it may be the only thing they see if it's not the most relevant. I might even switch this round so that my off-Broadway jobs are printed further down if my most relevant role is the one at the top of my regional theatre section. And then under skills, don't distract them with irrelevance saying you do fight arranging or that you speak French in the hope that they're going to remember it in six months' time when they're casting something else. It's just not going to happen. It's nonsense. It's wasting space. It's distracting them from looking at what's relevant. And the same with these dialects, accents that I've put down. God help me. If I'm applying for a role of someone who's Australian, the fact that I can do an Australian accent, it should be in my letter. And if it's not an Australian role, what on earth am I mentioning it here for? Of course, if the resume is for an agent, you list all your skills so they know they can send you up for dozens of different jobs. And if it's for a voiceover agent, you list all your possible accents. You make your resume specific to whatever you're applying for. But this one is for a theatre job. And ideally, I should cut every job that's irrelevant or only keep the ones that are nearest to being relevant. And if that only leaves a very short list, only four jobs, but they're all relevant, that could attract a casting director more than me making them read through all this about the fact that I played sh all these Shakespeare leads 15 years ago. Who cares? In fact, though, I do want to show them that I've done a lot. So I'm going to include more than four, but make the first four the relevant ones. But, 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 but before they even read the first relevant job here, there's something that can decide them on whether they look at your resume at all, before they see any information, before they even see your name, possibly. There's what the resume looks like, if it looks as if it'll be easy to read, to speed read, to find out the information they need quickly. So, just showing you an example of this first one blown up a bit, 
It's, it's, just, it's just too crowded. It's untidy. The print may be too small. If you combine the wrongly spaced hyphen in SAG-AFTRA, there's a disrespectful gap in my f agent's phone number, the distracting capitals in trained, the semicolon which I don't use anywhere else, a number of lines which are not lined up with the rest, the next column, the misspelt name of one of the directors, and the fact that n not all the lines line up with the next, with the, with the whole column. It just isn't professional. It gives them a reason to drop it in the bin, to have more time examining resumes which they can read at a glance. My agent's name is almost as big as mine, so that could come down one size. And the gaps between the columns here make it hard to connect whether the part I played here was in this play or this play, and which company I did it in. And if I move the columns closer together, these long titles here make it impossible to start the next column at the same point. So I might even check to see if those longer titles are jobs worth including, and cut them off because of that reason. Now here I've printed it with a few corrections and cut out some irrelevant jobs to allow more space between the lines and have the print size a little bigger, from 12 to 14. But I think, oddly enough, it may look better without the extra space between the lines. So the only way I can decide is if I print them both out and compare them side by side. It is the only way. So here we've got two. One has a gap between the lines and one doesn't. That allows me to include four extra jobs here. I want it to be the clearest resume they're going to get. And if you don't have very much to include at all, the tidiness is what's important. In this one that I invented, this poor little girl, we don't expect a young actor to have much on their resume. So two jobs laid out tidily can be made to look very important. A good professional photo may decide them on looking at your resume, but the resume itself is what gets you their full attention. And you could balance a short resume with a short letter mentioning, and letters should always be short, I think, uh, a letter mentioning that you've been in a similar play or done a similar TV role to the one they're casting. But this video isn't about how to write letters, so the resume boils down to this. It's for one job application. That means you have the hassle of rewriting them each time, but if your basic resume is clear and tidy, and mainly in the right order, that'll be easy to do. Just keep your resume relevant. I want these videos to help you get jobs.